All right. Welcome back to Check In, everybody. Uh, my name is Francis O'Rourke. I'm the host for the rest of the night. Thank you to Ty for filling in for me there. Very appreciated. Joining us here, uh, me tonight, is our second team for the night. It's Team Cybertooth, Team 3940. Guys, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves? Hey, I'm Gus. I'm team president. And I'm Lucy, and I'm a freshman this year. Cool. Well, welcome, to the, welcome back to the show, guys. Good to see you on again. So let's get started. So pretty funny video we got going there. Let's talk about um, your shooter first off. It looks like, I'm going to guess, that ring that Gollum was gu guarding, that has to do with your shooter somehow, right? That's got to be it. Yep. Definitely. <laughs> so tell us actually, about Yeah, that's actually one of our biggest components. So that's what we're using on our flywheel, and we put tread around it that we've tested out in, like, weeks two to three. And then um, right now we're in the process of making our one for a competition robot, and we have our practice robot one assembled, so we're just manufacturing right now. Yeah, so our um, the wheel that we're using is made of copper, and we so it's about five pounds so that we could get the the whole flywheel effect thing going, so that we have that really short recovery time so we can fire balls as fast as possible, and it, it's working really well. Um, the 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 heaviness is doing doing pretty well for us. <laughs> yeah. So, it, go ahead. It, the the picture that we had of Gollum that was actually a joke that we were talking about maybe engraving it with like the Lord of the Rings stuff, but that uh -huh. would make it unbalanced so that was kind of <laughs> okay sure yeah unbalanced and you know bring the eye of sauron upon us all but yeah whatever, yeah. whatever. Uh, that's important yeah. no biggie um so copper uh why not steel why copper because that's kind of like expensive and hard to machine yeah both are true um we so copper is more dense than steel and so we were able to get uh, more weight in a smaller volume Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So you guys are really, really, really trying to con really concerned about the mass of that flywheel to get the most energy into those balls. Yeah. Okay. What are you guys using to spin it up as far as motors? Um, we've got two 775 Pros um, running it. They're geared cool. to get. Awesome. So you said that the one in your practice robot is working. Mm -hmm. um, how? What are the results so far from your testing with the actual final uh, robot? Um, we haven't been able to do a whole lot of testing. It was it was just this Sunday where we got our first iteration of the shooter assembled. Okay. Um, we were able to get balls firing out of it. Um, and when we noticed that when we were putting balls in, there was literally no change in sound as the balls went through, just because the wheel was so hard to slow down. <laughs> um, so it, it was a little a little scary because we had a we had a C clamp to a table. Um, but yeah, it 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 appears to be doing what we want it to do. Fantastic. Cool. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so I guess with that, what else is going on with the shooter? You said you've got your practice bot shooter machined and bench testing. You've got your other one going, you're working on it. Um, what other parts do you have to get together before the whole thing's ready to call a robot? So right now we're kind of still assembling different things. And one of, we're, one of our main components, our turret is still in the works of, we're trying to, um, combine our shooter and our turret. So that way we can test those together to, um, so that we, we um, have testing and we know what we're doing on that. And we've also been working on some vision stuff mm -hmm. with our programming team. They've been working on being able to um, be able to fire um, our shooter from anywhere in the launch zone. So that way we have an accurate shot from anywhere on the field and not having to take time to set up in one place. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Just on, oh, sorry. Um, just on Sunday, we actually got our vision tracking um, working to an extent. Um, we, we hooked a turret up to our practice spot from last year. Um, and we we weren't even um, turning it on to run the auto tracking when we turned it on, but we turned it on and it automatically aimed to the boiler um, in in the corner <laughs> of the warehouse. So it was wow. it was pretty cool. It's going pretty well. That's awesome. That's great. Great to hear. Um, so when you when you guys track the target, what are you guys using to find it? Are you illuminating the strips? Uh, the the strips of retroflective tape, and if so, how? Um. Right now, we're working with a pixie cam, and we're, we're still looking at the best kind of lighting fixtures. Um, right now, we've kind of been working with a targeting light, um, but that's probably not what we're going to use on the final robot. Um, yeah, we're, we're using a pixie um, mounted on the turret. Oh, okay, cool. That'll be neat. Yeah. All right. So, um, also talking about um, uh, about the sh uh, sort of... A related to the shooter um you guys i'm sure have been making a whole bunch of stuff this weekend so let's talk about all the rest of the parts you guys are in the process of building we we've got a lot of machining going on um in andy mark right now we we've got the lathe in the mill running as much as possible um every meeting we have somebody working on it for the the entirety of the meeting we actually have people sign up for that tonight um <laughs> Uh, 
Wednesday. Um, so it, it's coming along. We're just limited by um, machine resources. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Go ahead, Lucy. Sorry, right. We're, we're really buckling down tonight because we need to get everything done by tomorrow night because we're powder coating all of our parts for both our practice and our um, competition robot on Thursday morning. So we're trying, we've assigned everybody everything, but we're using the lathe the most for most of our parts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that. I, I find that on, on my team, especially the lathe ends up, tends up being the bottleneck because yep. a lot of times you you have a mill, maybe you can fudge it and sort of do stuff on a drill press, or you know maybe you'll have multiple mills, but a lathe is one of those specialty tools that can be real challenging. Um, mm -hmm. So why don't you guys describe your machining resources you guys have available and how you're using them now? So here at AndyMark, we've got um, a lathe and a mill, as well as a CNC router. Um, that we're, we're running um, pretty constantly. Um, and so we've got, and then we also have some of the smaller tools like uh, a um, wheel grinder um, and some some stuff like that, as well as a drill press. And um, so we work, like I said, we're kind of running the mill and the lathe pretty much as much as we can. And then we've got um, some awesome people here at Andy Mark running the CNC for us. Oh, cool. That's mm -hmm. great to hear. Very yeah. cool. All right, well, hopefully you guys get all the parts done in time. Um, so yes. let's sort of talk about what I assume the rest of those parts are going to be for, not just shooters, but your gear mechanism and your climbing mechanism. Uh, mm -hmm. We heard, talked a little bit about that last week, two weeks ago. Where where does that stand today? So um, as you said before, we've combined our gear and our climbing mechanism into one. Oh. And when we did that, we definitely had to compromise some things, including the, uh, the climbing team wanted a bigger shaft, but um, we had to compromise that and... Uh, figure out what was best for both of them. And we also were going to use grommets before, but we've switched over to compliant wheels for the uh, because that's what the gear was going to use, but we decided that this was best. So we have an active one that instead of focusing on using the retrieval zone, we're picking up off the ground. And we have a trap door that swings open so that, that way we don't have to wait for the pilot, but we can, um, as soon as we put the gear onto the lifts, we can take off as soon as possible to make it as efficient as possible. Okay, can you guys, can you kind of describe what you mean by the, like the trap door? I'm kind of curious about that. I, I think it's a really great idea that you're being able to sort of put the peg, put the gear on the peg and let it be. Um, how does that work exactly? So basically we intake the gear into the wheels that are part of our intake. And as it sits there, we place it on the peg and then we have pneumatic cylinders that actuate and they basically take the floor out from under the gear and then we're able to drive it out um, even before the pilot gets it. Oh, uh, okay. Very cool. So we can just so, drop it down. Nice. So if the pilot's busy or if they're taking a nap or checking out something else on the field, they can you can just walk away and the gear will still be on the peg. Yep. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. our pilot won't be doing that. But yes. Well, yes, yes. No. I mean, you know, <laughs> things happen. You never know. Air yeah. balls go flying, what have you. Um, <laughs> so, um, so let's talk a little bit more about how the climber and the gear mechanism are combined. Because sort of in my head, those seem like they should be very different things. Um, so how have you? How have you? How does the climber sort of integrate with the gear delivery system? Um, so basically, we've integrated our climbing mechanism onto the shaft that the wheels run on for the gear pickup, um, and so it'll spool around the intake shaft. Ah, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So I, I assume you guys are using. You, you're, we know that you guys are using something similar to the Velcro idea. Yeah. Uh, is is your rope made of Velcro, or how does how does it how, how exactly do you sort of latch onto it? Um, well, we've uh, we've recently found that um, we have some ropes that stick well to Velcro if you fray them the right way, um, and so that's what we've been using. Um, as long as we have the end of the rope frayed correctly, it should stick to the Velcro on its own without us having to weave Velcro into it or anything. Oh, so you're just using like a regular old rope with like yep. the scratchy part of Velcro on it. Yep. Yeah, we did some pretty intensive testing with different ropes, and we found out that this um, even worked better than Velcro, just using a regular rope, but um, we frayed at the end so that way it could just go latch on as better than Velcro could. Yeah. Awesome. Great. I can't wait to see everything in action next week. Um, so, speaking of next week and the future, what are your guys' plans between now and what is almost, well, what, almost only six days left? What's, what's the plan? <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> um, we, like we said, we've got a lot of machining to do, a lot of assembly. Um, we're hoping to have everything assembled by Friday night or Saturday morning and then get everything wired on Saturday and Sunday. Um, and then also tomorrow we're actually meeting up with 
um, a team from Rochester, Indiana. They're coming here to our shop to visit um, and talk and stuff. It's Team 2909 ZebraBots. So they're, it'll be cool to um, meet with another team that's taking on the same challenge we are. Cool. So when you say yeah. you say meet with them, are you guys like discussing ideas? Are you like practicing, or are you sort of sharing machining resources? How what do you what are you guys up to exactly? Um, we're really just kind of touring them around Anymark, showing them what we've been up to. Um, maybe talk a little bit of strategy with them because we we feel it's um really good to have ties with other teams when you're at competition. Oh yeah. Um, just in case we run low on scouters or anything, and we so we can like scare sh- scouting data or something like that. Cool. Hmm. All right. So um. You've got a plan going forward. You know what you've got to finish up. Uh, I guess a couple of other quick questions. You said you're going to f- hopefully be wiring your robot on Saturday. Does that mean that you guys aren't going to any sort of like week zero events or anything like that? Well, we definitely talked about it. There was one that um, is in Indiana that we were talking about going to. That's um, We were kind of just going to plan on going there maybe to help other teams, some scouting, and also to compete against other teams, kind of like a scrimmage. But right. we decided that our time was more valuable staying here and kind of there's another local team technocast i think that we're, we might head over to their place because they have a field um but we decided that it would be best to stay here so that we could get done as much as possible mm-hmm. that's true it's hard to practice if you don't have a robot that uh <laughs> that runs so yeah <laughs> <laughs> very cool all right cool so uh let's see here um by the way everybody if you're listening um, we are taking questions in the chat. So if you've got questions for either Cybertooth or anyone else that we have on the show, just type exclamation point Q and uh, uh, exclamation point Q followed by your question in the Twitch chat. And if we like your question, we'll ask it uh, to these guys live on air. So uh, we've got a question coming up, you guys, uh, from the chat. We're just finishing uh, formatting it up here real quick. And it should be coming up in just a second. For it, wait for it. All right, cool. This is a, a question by Dean Cayman's denim. Apparently, okay. his jacket has attained sentience. But and uh, thread twitch, welcome. Uh, he's asking, why do you powder coat your robot? What's the what's the what's the reason for doing that? We are a very imagery based team. Um, we we're kind of known for our purple tie dye, and so we really like to match our robot and just look really really good, so we can get that imagery award and hopefully get the extra district points to push us over to going to champs. Ah, okay, cool. So all purple, all everything, basically. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very cool. All right, we got another question coming up here. We're going to put that one on screen as well uh, in another second here. Uh, maybe I'll just ask you real quick, why do you guys pick purple? Is there a reason purple as opposed to any other color? Is that your school color? or? Yeah, mm-hmm. those are our school colors. Um, we have a little bit of the like goldish color, but purple is definitely our main color. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, okay, cool. All right, so our second question is coming up here. Uh, from the chat and it is all right <laughs> good question here how much did that flywheel cost now i know that not every every team shares the their pricing data with everybody but uh what, what are we talking about here i'm assuming it was more than steel but i'm not exactly sure the the exact cost i know it was a, a good amount because we had to get a um a, a copper pipe about this long and like five inches in diameter or something like that. <laughs> a five inch diameter, half inch thick copper pipe. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's so, impressive, yeah. Okay. So it's probably at least like a hundred, hundred and twenty five dollars yeah. like that. Okay, cool. But it's worth it. I mean, if it's working, can't blame yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us. I wish you luck in your last few days of build season. I can't wait to see your robot scooting around the field next week here. Yep. Everybody else watching at home, we're gonna bring our next team up. We'll bring them on. It's going to be team number 2337, the Engine Nerds. They're from uh, Michigan, and they're going to be joining us in just a second. But Cybertooth, thank you once again, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye for now, Thank you.